Today's topic of discussion is therapeutic uses of the corticosteroid. Hello and welcome to Pharmacomania. I am Dr. Shahnaz Malik and we are going to discuss therapeutic uses of the corticosteroid. So there are two types of the uh, uses. First is the replacement therapy in deficient state. It is the endocrinal disorder. And second one is the non-endocrinal disorders like uh, it act as an anti-inflammatory as well as an immunosuppressive agent. Now in replacement therapy where the corticosteroids are absent or very low in level of the corticosteroids. So there are the three types of the deficient state of the corticosteroid like acute adrenal insufficiency, chronic adrenal insufficiency and congenital adrenal hyperplasia. So first is the acute adrenal insufficiency. It is an emergency condition and it can be treated with the intravenous hydrocortisone uh, and uh, intravenous uh, fluid replacement therapy with the sodium um, normal saline and 5% dextrose to correct the fluid and electrolytes. Uh, it can be precipitated due to trauma, infection and hemorrhage and it should be treated. Second one is the chronic adrenal insufficiency. It is adesensitis and it can be treated by oral hydrocortisone. The dose of the oral hydrocortisone is very high. So it can be divided in two doses. One dose in the two third dose of the total dose is given in the morning and one third dose can be given in the evening with the adequate salt and water, water replacement. Now congenital adrenal hyperplasia where deficiency of 21 hydroxylase enzyme. So ultimately uh, decrease the synthesis of cortical aldosterone and uh, um, increase the acetate and, uh, secretion uh, from an adrenal hypertrophy. So in treatment of adrenal, um, congenital adrenal hyperplasia hydrocortisone daily 0.6 milligram per kg in divided doses can be given to suppress acetate secretion. So glucocorticoids are a very powerful drug and widespread use to uh, anti-inflammatory as well as immunosuppressive present, um, properties. It, uh, dramatic improvement in the disease uh, so used in palliative as well as empirical therapy. Now so, some various uh, mode of drug administration of the glucocorticoids. So these are the various mode of administration of the glucocorticoid. So first of all is the pulse therapy where the uh, short uh, acting or the intermediately acting glucocorticoid can be introduced. Uh, large dose for the three days uh, intravenously like methylprednisolone to mitigate emergency like acute rejection of graft, graves, exophthalmus and acute exacerbation of multiple sclerosis. Second one is intensive short term therapy. Large doses of prednisolone for the 42 to 48 to 72 hours for potentially lethal inflammatory condition or metabolic condition. Now prolong use, prolong high dose of the corticosteroid, uh, they can uh, suppress the HPA excess and um, there are fear of adverse drug reaction as well as withdrawal reaction. So need close supervision is required. Now topical or inhalation corticosteroid like betamethasone dipropionate, bidazonide and fluto, uh, fluticasone. It can be given in through inhalation in asthmatic patient as a spray in the nasal allergy and cream for the skin and mucous membrane lesions. So next use of the glucocorticoid is as a intra-articular injection or intra-tendinous injection. Uh, it can be used in painful arthritis and uh, should not be repeated more than two doses uh, in a year. So there are non-endocrine uses like uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, it is the condition where pain and inflammation is there. So it can be reduced by the immediate and dramatic symptomatic relief in the rheumatoid arthritis and it does not halt the progress of the disease. Their anti-inflammatory effect uh, decreases the swelling, redness, pain and improvement in mobility of the joint. It can be given with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug as well as disease modifying anti-rheumatic uh, drug, drugs. 
glucocorticoids are rarely used in the osteoarthritis intraarticular injection can be recommended for acute episode involving one to two joints rheumatic fever glucocorticoid produces more rapid symptomatic relief than the aspirin and indicated in cases with the carditis and congestive heart failure prednisolone is given along with aspirin and should be continued until the esr comes to the normal then steroid is tapered gradually uh, in gout glucocorticoids are reserved anti inflammatory drug which are not responding to nsaids and in, uh, it can be used in allergic condition like hay fever and reaction to any allergic condition so these are the mnemonics for the this is like a for arthritis allergic reaction and autoimmune diseases now collagen diseases like uh, polymyositis polyarthritis nodosa and polymyalgia rheumatica and dermatomyositis these are the all collagen diseases can be controlled with the large doses of glucocorticoid so steroid with a negligible salt and water retention property can be preferred in this condition and cerebral edema the effectiveness of the glucocorticoid in cerebral edema depend upon the underlying causes they are very effective when the edema is caused by the brain tumor so c for collagen disease and cerebral edema e for eye disease i in eye disease anterior chamber diseases like allergic conjunctivitis iritis iridocyclitis and keratitis all this condition uh, topical instigation of the corticosteroid or eye drops or ointment can be used in posterior segmental diseases like uh, retinitis optic neuritis uveitis systemic steroid uh, therapy or retrobulbar injection can be given uh, it should not be uh, used in infective condition or contraindicated in hyper uh, herpes simplex keratitis or ocular trauma so it can uh, perforate the cornea in the herpes simplex so it cannot be used in herpes keratitis in malignant condition like uh, in uh, essential for the acute lymphocytic leukemia and hodgkins lymphoma and secondary to role in breast cancer symptomatic in advanced cancer secondary to hypercalcemia management in malignancy it reduces the calcium level of the malignant patient so i4 intestinal diseases and infective diseases in intestinal diseases like ulcerative colitis crohn's disease and celiac disease where corticosteroid are used as a retention enema and in infective condition like in serious infective diseases like miliary meningeal and renal tuberculosis where corticosteroids are used but in intestinal tuberculosis steroids are contraindicated because it can cause perforation of the intestine severe lepra reaction bacterial meningitis uh, pneumocystic carini and pneumohypoxia and uh, in the aids diseases and it must be administered under a chemotherapeutic cover next is the stimulation of the lung maturation in the fetus in fetal secretion of the cortisone govern lung maturation in the fetus in the premature labor the uh, it should be given in the mother with a large dose of the betamethasone 12 mg intramuscular two doses Uh, can be given to reduce the incidence of respiratory distress in the infant uh, delivered prematurely betamethasone has better permeability to the placenta and because its placental metabolism as well as maternal protein binding is less than the cortisone and prednisolone so betamethasone is preferred drug in the premature labor now in skin diseases like uh, eczematous skin diseases uh, pemphigus vulgaris exo, uh, exfoliative dermatitis and steven jensen syndrome where it can be used topically as well as systemic use in septic shock it is the emergency condition where infective patient have rel relative adrenal insufficiency and beneficial effect of the low dose of hydrocortisone uh, 100 mg at early iv infusion for the 5 to 7 days for the a patient are for the septic shock patient 
in organ transplantation and skin allograft a uh, high dose of corticosteroid are given along with other immunosuppression to prevent the rejection of the reaction low maintenance doses are generally continue over the long period at, uh, for the maintenance uh, as maintenance doses in thyroid storm have concomitant adrenal insufficiency it reduces the peripheral conversion of t4 to t3 and hydrocortisone can be given eight hourly may produce uh, good outcome Thank you for watching the video.